Hello everyone, welcome to episode 63 of Level Up, 60 minutes of live Q&A where your questions and votes drive the show. Level Up comes to you live on Mondays at 8am UK time and on Fridays at 2pm UK time, streamed directly to YouTube and LinkedIn. You can find out more about what we do by visiting apmginternational.com and searching for Level Up. Today's topic is when to choose waterfall project management versus agile project management something that no doubt you've had to consider at some point in your project management career. If you'd like to join in today's session, please use the Slido link in the chat to vote up the questions that you want answered, and of course, to add in your own questions throughout the show. Alternatively, the APMG team are active in the chat on both YouTube and LinkedIn. So if you have any questions or comments for the panel, please post it there and they will pick it up. Throughout the show, we'll be bringing the live comments um, onto the screen. So feel free to say hello, and let us know where you're joining from. We'd love to hear from you and involve you in the show. Okay, so our panel are waiting eagerly to share their knowledge and experience with you. So let's jump straight in and meet them. Uh, firstly, joining us from the Netherlands is uh, Jeroen Gertsen. Jeroen has a wealth of practical experience with previous roles, including CIO, ERP project manager, and change and implementation manager. Jeroen is also an accredited trainer for Zest Group, delivering a variety of training and certifications, including Agile Project Management, Prince2, and Agile Change Agent. Welcome, your own. Thank you very much. will be good. And thanks for uh, already introducing what I can do. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. OK, so next we have uh, Jackie Hewitt. Jackie is the Operational Director and Lead Trainer for Balance Global. Jackie is a passionate advocate of Practice What You Teach. She holds an IPD grad in Personnel Management and is an approved trainer for several project and change management products, including the APMG Change Management course, Agile PM, and Praxis Framework. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Ellie. Thanks very much for inviting me back. I think this is a great topic. Um, and as you rightly say, it must come up in most project managers' uh, minds at some point when they're starting a new project. So, yeah, it's going to be a great topic. For sure. So uh, next, I'd like to introduce you to Holger Hoys. Holger is a subject expert advisor covering operational governance, strategy execution, change and portfolio management, just to name a few of his areas of expertise. Holger has delivered successful global transformation programs in complex multinational organizations and provides thought leadership for corporate portfolio management. Hi, Holger. Hello um, and good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, absolutely excited. This is a topic uh, very close to my heart uh, to talk about uh, the mystery of the waterfall methodology. <laughs> Thanks, Holger. So uh, next we have David McCreary. Uh, David's project experience has been built up over 30 years across a wide range of sectors. David has managed projects across EMEA and has an in-depth experience in dealing with business change projects. David has also started to relearn artificial intelligence and machine learning, completing a scholarship in it. Welcome, David. Great, guys, and I'm looking forward to this. I agree with the guys. Uh, it's a hot topic to understand and to be able to apply Agile, or we'll call it waterfall, um, in the right situations. Thanks, David. So finally, completing the panel for today and joining us from South Africa is Nadine Sinequan. Nadine is one of the directors for Thought Nation. She provides training for candidates on project management and change management topics. And although Nadine has been a pro program and project manager for the greater part of her career, she also has a solid technical background, having started her career as an IT engineer and progressed into various management positions. Welcome back to the panel, Nadine. Thank you, Eli. Um, This is going to be a very interesting topic and it's elicited many a uh, hot heated debate. And very interesting. I would, what I think it's going to be an interesting time. Yeah, for sure. So, a big thank you to all of our panelists for joining us today. And if you're watching today's show and feel like you'd like to have a go at answering questions on your specialist subject, you can volunteer in the chat and we'll be in touch to welcome you to a future panel. Our question master for today is Charlotte Miller. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Ellie. Hi, everybody. Welcome, audience. So great, so we, can we have our first question for the panel then, please? We certainly can. We have a question, sorry, question from Rebecca in London. What are the key factors to consider when choosing a project management methodology? 
Great one to get started with. Okay, so we'll go your own, Jackie, Holger, and then Nadine on this one, please. Okay, so yeah, uh, the key factor is, of course, the benefits that the project uh, needs to uh, obtain um, compared to the cost of the deliverables. And will it be possible to have already short deliverables that uh, will add benefits so that you can do it uh, incremental? And yeah, is the organization open for that? Or um, are they driving through a tunnel that they only say, we just uh, want to do that? Or are they open in the outside world well, they, where they know we need to look at our environment as well and see that we might take a different uh, route to go to? So, yeah, sure. Um, thank yeah. Thanks, Zero. And that's uh, really helpful. Um, Jackie, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, um, building on that, of course, business case, always fundamental importance uh, to any project. But when choosing your methodology, uh, I think you need to consider particularly things like the knowledge, the experience, uh, the expertise within the project team. Are they familiar with particular methodologies or not? How quickly does this need to get started? Have you got time to train them in a new methodology? And of fundamental importance to me when thinking about Agile is how stable are the requirements? You know, uh, do you think you're you anticipating lots of changing requirements, in which case Agile is the way to go? Uh, if they're pretty stable, um, then probably maybe more a waterfall. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, Jackie. And, um, you know, do the team know what else is out there and do they know how to do it? Mm -hmm. um, Holger, your views, please. Um, probably slightly different. Um, I believe fundamentally you ought to be using the project management methodology that's applicable in the organization you work with. And hopefully you have been trained and onboarded on that, um, whether that is an official training or not, is something else. Uh, besides that, for me, fundamentally, project management um, differs from delivery management. So you can use any project management methodology whether that's being PRINCE2 or PMI, they will all ask you to complement it with the right delivery approach. And that's where an agile approach might be applicable. It might not be, even in the technology space, we know there are kind of projects where it's not possible to proceed in an agile fashion. So important, there's a difference between project management methodology and delivery methodology. Okay, thanks, Holger. Um, Nadine, your thoughts, please. Yes, I think also when choosing between waterfall and agile, it's uh, very important to understand. Um, I think, as everyone said, what is your uh, what is your organization's methodology, and if it's been waterfall, um, what is your organizational culture like? Can you transition to agile very quickly? Um, then again, the other thing that's very important is how much involvement are your customers going to have in the project? If your customer is not going to be involved much, then I would suggest waterfall. And if your customer is going to be involved all the time, then um, agile, uh, one, um, an agile methodology is a good approach. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. So, um, Charlotte, please, may we have our next question, please? You certainly can, Ellie. We have a question from Mary in Boston. Can we blend a traditional waterfall and agile, P, agile PM approach? Is this something you've tried? And if so, how did it work out? Okay, thank you, Mary. Okay, so we'll go David, your own, Jackie, and then Holger on this one, please. Um, I think, of course, you can blend agile with a traditional approach. There's benefits to both, um, particularly if, you know, if you're using Agile, you're going to have to incorporate Agile into the way the organization works, into the way the organization works through barriers to get things done. And in that situation, you may need to put some project management approaches on top of your Agile. And I think on the other hand, if you're using a traditional project management approach for team delivery, I think a lot of the agile techniques, maybe not the whole agile approach, but a lot of the agile techniques are really, really useful. But I think one of the key things is, is to understand that the agile mindset, either in traditional or in an agile environment, 
is a really key, highly productive way to get people to deliver work. Um, so I think you can blend, and I think it is a good thing to blend it. Thank you, David. Your own? Yeah, practical experience in uh, setting up a uh, joint venture uh, where a program uh, was uh, for that. And the legal things um, were hard blocks. You could only do that in the waterfall methodology, but optimizing the business and seeing how that uh, would work also with the market situation. Let's do that on the agile way, but know that the legal things will give you the hard blocks and you must also uh, yeah, adapt your agile uh, way of working and delivery of uh, things that it fits with the blocks that are on the road. Yeah, definitely. So a combination of, uh, of both is possible, but you need to take into account the uh, pluses and minuses of both approaches. Um, so Jackie, um, your view on this one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. It, yeah, Jackie, think, your thoughts, please. Building on that, blending, yes, but with care. Um, I think where you are at your different stages or phases of your project, you need to be clear um, what approach you're using for which stages so that they, you don't get some ugly kind of hybrid crossover within a particular stage or phase. So you need to have that clarity in place and completely the, the issue about uh, contractual stuff for sure. Um, and I think maybe different approaches lend themselves potentially better for different parts of your project. So, so maybe testing more waterfall or, or something more of a sort of a traditional approach. Um, but when you're trying to thrash out the requirements, maybe more agile. So I think yes, but with care. Brilliant. And Holger, if you can finish us off on this one, please. Yeah, I think I look at it from waterfall versus agile at a continuum between two extremes where neither extreme actually exists. So, you know, if you try to find the waterfall approach, you will fail. It's, it exists only in theory, not in practice. That's one thing. Uh, also, if you look at an agile approach, um, I look at uh, the techniques, and someone has it already mentioned. Uh, according to State of Agile, there are 15 or 16 techniques. How many of those do you need to apply to call yourself agile? Is it enough to do stand-ups every day? It's one technique and it's an agile technique. Or do you need to apply five, six? One must also not forget that most agile techniques and principles originate either in change management or organizational change management or traditional project management. That is also quite important. So in, invariably, when you do project management, you will have a blend. Some project managers are more servant leaders. Others are more, and I use that term with uh, quotation marks, dictatorial or authoritarian. And it also depends on the situation on the project. So always a blend by definition. Thanks, Holger. I can tell already that your team, WAGIL, which was a term that was coined on uh, on a previous LinkedIn and previous Level Up episode, sorry, uh, Team Wajal. Okay, um, thanks, uh, Charlotte. Please, may we have a next question? Ali, we have a series of live questions coming up next. So these are questions that the audience, the live audience, have asked. Um, we have a question from Nick Cara. Can Agile and Waterfall be used in construction project management? As I'm thinking of getting more knowledge on it. What are the career opportunities related to it? Okay, panel. Anybody got any um, experience of using Agile in construction environment? Okay, Holger and then David, please. Yeah, I, I would uh, probably recommend going state of Agile. Have a look at the different techniques that are making up the toolbox that's Agile. Um, doing stand-ups. You can do that in the construction industry. Uh, you can use some of the uh, visualization techniques, such as Kanban, uh, to, to get more visibility going for your teams and so forth. So have a look at what, what's on offer. Uh, some of that we, you will already do it, be doing, for example, uh, planning uh, or rolling wave planning even. It might be called differently now uh, in an agile environment. So you, 
go go to that and have a look at what's good for you and reflect also the culture within your different probably construction projects. Thank you, Holger. David? Yeah, I'm actually just going to back up exactly what, what, what Holger said there. Um, things like toolbox talks have been used in construction for many, many years. Uh, that's a daily stand up where one of the foremen or four persons stands on organizes the team. So there are definitely elements of Agile that can apply to construction. There's certainly things like fit out and kit out of buildings. That's absolutely applicable to, to Agile. But at the same time, hard construction will probably remain as a waterfall approach because it requires planning and a lot of organization of different resources. But again, I think it is important. You can apply certain types of agile approaches. Kanban certainly works, and your daily stand up with a toolbox talk has actually been used in, in construction for, for, for decades. Yeah, so it's coming back to this principle of, uh, you know, maybe taking the best from both um, and, uh, and creating a blended approach. Nadine, I think you wanted to add something to this one. Yes, I did. So I think it's um, important to understand that you can use some of the agile techniques when doing construction project management. In terms of the methodology, um, I don't know whether agile methodology is fitting, especially for hard construction. I think in that case, you would need to use uh, water, a, a waterfall methodology. Um, but you can, as everyone said, use some of the um, techniques and tools from agile. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, wonderful. Um, thanks very much for that live uh, question, viewer. Um, if you are watching us live and have a question you want answered, please pop it in the chat or pop it in Slido and one of my colleagues will pick it up. Um, Charlotte, please, can we have the next question? You certainly can, Ali. I'm not sure who this question is from, uh, but it is a live question. What key risks do you need to manage when running a program that involves projects using a combination of waterfall and agile? Okay, interesting one for the panel. Um, your own will come to you first, then Nadine, Jackie, and then Holger. Yeah, the key risky thing is uh, the fact, of course, that uh, waterfall will be uh, straightforward, but are it still uh, the valid things to do because the uh, situation might have changed and you're just uh, building waste. Um, and yeah, with, uh, with Agile, you change things, but is there a dependency between what you deliver uh, on the waterfall way, which uh, is depending on what you have thought to do in the Agile uh, way? That will, uh, those dependencies of uh, deliveries and, and also the timing of those deliveries will be uh, yeah, important to manage, crucial. Thanks, Jerome. Um, uh, Nadine? Okay, so the key risks that I deem very important um, to consider are, one, um, the governance. So on, on Waterfall, you're very governance um, intensive. And on um, Agile, you don't have very many artifacts, artifacts. So you need to just consider that you don't get bogged down by either or you don't um, exclude one or the other. Um, in terms of your governance. And then also, um, do you have your customer involved? Because if you're doing anything agile and your customer is not involved, um, you are running the risk of not producing the correct um, um, products. Uh, whereas in Waterfall, you can only you can determine that afterwards. So those are the two key risks that I would uh, say are very important. Thank you, Nadine. Jackie, your thoughts? Yeah, for me, I think it's it is very much on the timing and dependencies between what you're doing, the products and the artifacts between the different uh, approaches in the different stages, and being absolutely clear on on you know we're cutting to this and this is using a different approach. So uh, for me, it's a sort of that clarity and and you know the the dependencies, which also comes down to planning. Yeah, um, that's really important. Thank you, um, Holger. Your view, please. Um. Yeah, I, I go um, as far as saying the communication between the different teams. Um, that we are using one language, a common language that's commonly understood. Um, and then having one voice uh, towards the customer 
um, as mentioned before. For me, that's key. Um, you also would have to look at the, the, the planning, the drum beat behind a program, that it is aligned between the different teams. That shouldn't be a problem for an experienced program manager, but uh, I still feel I should mention it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so thank you to all of the audience uh, who are commenting. Um, if you are watching us live and uh, you'd like to give some feedback to the panel, um, pop it in the uh, chat on the LinkedIn and YouTube and we'll pop it up on the screen so the panel can see it. Charlotte, please may we have our next question. You can, Ellie. We've got a, another live question and this question is asking, what are the drivers and barriers to adopt hybrid PM means combination of agile waterfall? Okay, panel, what are the barriers to our agile approach? Um, so Holger, uh, David, Nadine, and then your own piece, and then Jackie. I think one of the key drivers um, of using one or the other approach is the knowledge and expertise and the maturity of the organization you work with. So I had customers in the past who said, we want to do agile. And after three months, they said, uh, we can't do agile. We need to go um, more traditional and we need to sign requirements off before they get implemented. So it's, it's the level of comfort um, you achieve. Remember, if you follow approaches, regardless which one it is, uh, it's part of your assurance system, and assurance means providing confidence to the senior management you deliver. So if they're not comfortable with one or the other approach, you're not going to be successful ultimately. So that's for me what's behind it. It is driven by your stakeholders and what they want to see. Yeah, thanks, Holger. That makes a whole lot of sense. And um, Nadine, your views, please. Okay, so I think the drivers are, uh, the important drivers for me are, um, what are you going, you need to determine exactly which parts are going to be um, agile and which components you're going to be using waterfall for. And then I think the barriers there are essentially, again, um, the same risks that we had earlier on, what are um, um, what's name, what kind of governance do you need on the project? Um, is it artifact uh, heavy? Um, are the customers involved? So those are the barriers. If your customers are not involved, then it's going to be very difficult um, to what's name to deliver on the agile components. Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you. So David, your views on this one, please. Yeah, I mean, the the driver of of adopting a hybrid approach has to be to understand what you can predict and what is not really smart or clever to predict. So the elements of the project that you can predict, let's predict those and let's have a process around that element of the project. But the elements of the project that you can't predict, um, we, we will take the hybrid agile approach because that's a more sensible way to do it. And we can go through the loop of defining and deploying as we go along. But the barrier then is confusion. Um, because that creates a confusion between the teams where people are unsure as to their approach, as to type of the approach, uh, perhaps of governance, reports, et cetera. So, so you need to be really, really careful to make sure you understand what the positive of the predictability is and what the efficiency and ability to deliver of, of the, the agile is. Otherwise, we'll have this confusion. Um, and that is a significant barrier when you try and blend two different ways of thinking together. Yeah, indeed. Um, so your own, uh, your thoughts, please. Yeah, I agree with uh, David and I have uh, a bit of uh, things uh, uh, that I could uh, say to Holger as well. Um, I'm uh, in principle always saying agile where you can and waterfall only when you must. And sometimes uh, governance um, say, no, you must do it waterfall. That's also why I do the agile change agent. And I try to find a force to also change the attitude of the governance to make sure that uh, you really do what gives you the value and not just do what they tell you. Uh, so yeah, yeah, sometimes you have to push back governance. 
Yeah, I definitely think that's an important one, your own. I think that's come up, you know, lots of times uh, when I've been speaking to training companies about, you know, training the project manager in an agile approach, but other parts of the organization, um, you know, don't understand what it is or don't understand how to work that way. So finding something that can help educate the rest of the organization is really important. Um, so, uh, Jackie, your view on this one, please. Yeah, I think uh, one of the key drivers is people like the idea. They like the, the thought of, you know, flexible and, and what that's going to give them. Um, but there can be a tendency for people to think that's going to be like a panacea and it's going to cure everything. You know, chuck some good people, clever people in a room. They'll be hugely motivated and magic will just happen. Um, so I think people often get sort of carried away with the bandwagon and the thought of all this great stuff they hear about Agile. Um but that you know they they kind of overlook that the culture has to be right. So I think one of the actual barriers is you know are we really ready for this as as an organisation and and building on what people have said you know finding the right agent for change within an organisation, getting the culture right that they really will accept that they're not necessarily going to get everything they thought uh, at the outset. But the the upside is you know we're going to contain cost and time. So uh, yeah. Great, thanks panel. Uh, so Miroslav, I hope that answered your question. Um, if you have any more questions, please do pop them in the chat and we'll put them forward to the panel. Charlotte, please can we have the next question? You can, Ellie. We've got another live question from Tom Bannerston. Is there such a thing as a pure agile approach? <laughs> David, you were very quick off the mark with that one, so we'll come to you. Well, you, look, some people are nearly religious on their agile approach and you have to follow a particular way. And if it's not in the scrum guide or if it's not in the agile manifesto, you're doing it wrong. And, and I think that's counter to agile. Okay. So, so agile is actually about applying smart ways, efficient ways of doing that work for your particular team and work for your particular organization. So there's no such thing as a pure agile approach that can be sort of taken out of a tin and say that can be applied. But there is an agile mindset. There is a, a thinking about agile, about removing barriers, about getting the team um, uh, to work together to deliver the elements. And, and the whole idea is around servant leadership. So, so there's an agile mindset, but I don't think there's a pure agile approach. And I don't think there should be. Um, I don't know if that answers, but I. That's certainly my opinion on it. Yeah, that well, that's what you're here for, David. It's certainly um, an opinion that maybe the panel have a response to. Holger, we'll uh, have your views on this one, please. Yeah, I immediately had to think about yin and yang, meaning there's the agile mindset, which I think is fundamental. And that's what I see more uh, crucial and important. Uh, there's the other part, which is the up agile in real life application uh, where in my eyes a lot of things have gone wrong um, David I would always go back to the agile manifesto and the principles uh, they have to be applicable um, it isn't the same thing when I look at all the frameworks that are out there they have their they have their right to be there and they do good things, but what one should not ever forget there is a commercial angle to it. And if a framework is so complicated that I need someone to train me in, um, or mm -hmm. I need a consultant to explain the terminology of that framework to me, then it's reaching a boundary, shall we say, in my eyes. So yin and yang, mindset is good, um, approach. Um, you need to look and take what is actually good for you and for your organization. Thanks, Holger. Um, Jackie, I think you had some thoughts on this one as well. Yeah, I mean, building on what David and Holger um, have already said and, and what Holger actually said earlier about, you know, extremes of anything, you know, pure. What do we mean by pure? Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure that it's yeah, absolutely 100% this. And I think for me, agile is a philosophy and a mindset or a set of behaviors, if you like. And 100 percent, it's back to the agile manifesto that kind of encapsulates it. But in all projects anyway, we build in elements of what we like from elsewhere. 
So almost any approach isn't necessarily 100% pure because we build on our experiences and plug in um, little extras that are techniques that have worked for us before. Yeah, for sure. Thanks very much, guys. A great answer to that one. Um, Charlotte, can we have another question, please? You can, Ali. We've got a live anonymous question. Is the division between agile and waterfall starting to get unhelpful? Is it stopping us thinking more creatively about projects? Wow, a live anonymous question from a mystery viewer. Um, okay, panel. So we'll have Olga, David, Jackie, your own, and then Nadine. Everyone's got an answer for this one. <laughs> yeah, I think you probably picked already from my previous answers. I think it is actually really unhelpful. Um, you should pick uh, the approach that's right for the delivery of your project, or even if you can't call it project anymore, your work package or your deliverables. Uh, that's applicable within the environment you are in. That means the culture of the organization, the maturity of the people you work with, and apply that. And yes, be creative as the scrum master, the project manager, the team leader to help those people who you work with to understand what you think you aim for and how you get to the outcome that's desirable. And that has, you know, that's a lot of um, logical thinking, obviously, rather than following one discrete approach. It, it's people you're working with and you shall not forget that. Yeah, very good advice there, Holger. Thank you. David, your views? Yeah, the answer is yes. I, I agree with this little statement. Um, I do think the division between Agile and Waterfall is unhelpful. I'm not sure I have ever seen a pure uh, um, Waterfall project or a pure Agile, but we get these sort of debates that kind of push out to the extremes. Um, being more creative in, in projects, yeah, I, I think it is. I think there's huge opportunity to be more, create, be more creative in projects. There's huge opportunity to use new technologies. There's huge opportunities to take a different approach. And siloed thinkings in one particular area may not be that helpful. There are probably some elements of waterfall that could be manipulated and rethought about and reused that would actually be helpful even in agile projects. And yeah, we have a debate that kind of pushes to the extremes. It isn't helpful. Yeah, there, there will always be the evangelists, won't they, for either side. Um, Jackie, your views on this one. Yeah, I think when Agile first appeared on the scene, um, the divide was much greater. Um, we had the evangelist sort of perspective um, and it was like throw project management out of the window. We're all creatives and we're going to sit in a room and do great stuff. So I think the traditional project managers who were around at that time didn't like it and saw it as a threat. And in the early days, I think Agile was quite immature, but I like to say Agile has now grown up and it's a greater recognition that we need this sort of wrapper around it. And I've seen more and more what I would have called traditional um, waterfall project managers become far more accepting now. Um, so it's not a good thing. I think it's breaking down. And I think the more different techniques and methodologies and tools that uh, come about, it, it does go some way to breaking this down. And let's take the recent example that we've all had of COVID and lockdowns. And one of the key tenets of Agile is collaborate. And everybody thought that meant you had to be in a room. And the traditionalists, well, my project can't be Agile because, well, we're all seeing this now, aren't we? We're all using Zoom and Teams and all these techniques and virtual classrooms and things like this. And so I think these, these sort of uh, divides are breaking down over time and I'm seeing less and less of them, which is only a good thing. Yeah, definitely a good thing. Um, your own, your views. Yeah, well, I think it's um, helpful to have that uh, um, division between Agile and Waterfall because, uh, you know, if uh, you do it in the Waterfall way, uh, you really have to look more at really the business justification because the things around the project might have changed so much that you better stop the project because if you go and do what was agreed in the Waterfall approach, will be pure waste. And, okay, Agile. 
oh, that's good that uh, you know that you need to look at the changes in uh, your environment and uh, make sure that you adapt what is being delivered there. I have had uh, several waterfall projects where I was able to uh, indeed pull out the plug and kill the project. Thanks, Jerome. Uh, Nadine, finish, off, finish us off on this one, please. Yes. Um, so um, there's also this belief that um, Agile um, is, um, has progressed, um, project management has progressed, and that Waterfall is an antiquated um, project management methodology. Um, so a lot of Agile lists, as I would call them, would uh, want to not include any waterfall uh, methodologies or um, techniques in there, which is very unhelpful because it actually doesn't, it, it, it um, prevents you from being creative because you can use the two side by side and the tools and techniques um, quite efficiently. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, anonymous viewer, whoever you were. A great question um, and helps to put maybe some of the panel on where on the scale they sit um, in this debate. Um, Charlotte, please, may we have our next question? You can, Ellie. We've got lots of live questions to get through. This is the next one. How does the Agile model overcome the limitations of the waterfall model? Okay, panel. How does the Agile model overcome the limitations of the waterfall model? Um, so Jackie and then David um, uh, on this one. Yeah, simply more change friendly. Um, there isn't a project around that has no changing requirements. Nothing do we ever specify absolutely perfectly right up front. Um, and whilst, of course, you do have um, the ability to have change within a waterfall type project, it can be a bit slower. So it, it's this ability to sort of chop and change as you learn more about the project and what it really wants rather than what you thought you wanted at the outset. Uh, you can run with that better. So it gives you that flexibility, which is what it was designed to do. Thank you, Jackie. That's um, really helpful. David, your views? Yeah, th this is a really big question that you could probably um, spend days diving into. So there's a lot of elements to it. But I think the core thing, I'm going to go back to the original one, it is the agile mindset. I think the agile mindset the mindset of the organization, the mindset of the people, that's really what brings the key um, benefit of Agile over Waterfall. And that drives into, into delivering um, sooner, quicker, and making sure we get a feedback loop that is sooner and quicker. So that's to me, is one of the key things outside the Agile mindset is that we've got a much quicker feedback loop um, but there's loads more elements to this. Is there's the delegation of, of responsibilities that Agile allows us to have. It's the connection between the um, developers and the consumers or, or the users. All these, so, so there's a huge amount in it. Um, yeah, so I, we could go on for all day on this one. Um, you could probably pick each element of the uh, Agile Manifesto and tease out uh, the reasons why Agile has a benefit over, over Waterfall. Thanks, David. Um, Holger, your views on this one, please? Yeah, I, I probably would um, go over the topic of communication and the emphasis of communication. So what's different in Agile versus Waterfall? Firstly, we had our people in the technical delivery teams moving on. You have developers, they want to work from three o'clock in the afternoon until midnight, and that's fine. You have people in different locations, different cultural backgrounds. What does Agile do? It forces the communication by a daily stand-up. So there is a minimum of communication you probably wouldn't find in the non-existing mm -hmm. waterfall approach. Uh, in addition to that, um, and David mentioned that already, the communication with the customer much more regular and being almost enforced um, for the business to come to the table to help people making joint design decisions uh, throughout the life cycle and it's not being thrown as a requirement over the fence and it comes back in a different shape than expected and there is more in, there is again the communication on a regular basis, interaction, 
um, you will expose early deliver deliverables and get feedback and then go into the next iteration. Yeah, thank you, Holger. Uh, so speaking of interaction, uh, we've got some comments coming in from the live audience. Um, so we'll take a look at a couple of those now before we move on to our next question. So audience, if you are watching us live and you want to um, uh, give some feedback to the panel, uh, just pop it in the chat and the team will pick it up. Uh, so this person says they've seen some, oh, it's gone. <laughs> uh, can we have that one back, please? Okay, so this one says, I've seen some challenges with Agile, particularly if you have a weak product owner who is responsible for approving the uh, backlog. Panel, anything to feedback on that one, David, very quickly? Yeah, the, the role of the product owner is a really interesting one. And we, we've got two extremes of, of product owners. One who is the expert, who knows everything, who can answer all the questions of the delivery team, uh, he or she knows all the detail. And then on the other extreme, we've got a product owner who is just a, dis a dispatch writer who takes requests from the users, from the customers, and dispatches them to the team. Mm -hmm. They're two extremes of a product owner. And in actual fact, neither of those are good. We need somebody uh, to be highly skilled in this product owner role who has a deep knowledge of the requirements to an extent, but who also needs to go back to the customers to, and the users or whoever they are to verify and to uh, continue the communication. So a weak product owner is a problem because they are just dispatch writers. Um, they're not controlling any of the elements and they're not putting that level of knowledge either. Um, so yeah, it is really important that we have product owners that know the business, know uh, the technology that they're trying to deliver, but also are well connected with the key stakeholders or the users. Thank you, David. Right, our live questions are stacking up panel. So I know we could talk about these things for hours, but we do need to try and get some responses to these audience. So Charlotte, can you come back please and give us our next question? Yes, we've got a question from Gurdeep Sharma. What's the best approach for Agile implementation? Okay, approaches for Agile implementation panel. Your own, we'll go to you and then David, please. Um, there are, of course, uh, a lot of uh, Agile ways of working. Okay, when it's a small uh, initiative, um, well, uh, do it on the Scrum way, but uh, when it will have um, a bigger business impact and a bigger business change. Make sure you use the Agile project management. When it's uh, really more on a stable organization that um, you just want to continuously improve what you're doing and you're more focused on well, the delivery and not so much on the deployment, I would go for the scaled Agile framework. So yeah, there is not just uh, one Agile approach uh, that uh, will uh, do everything. It depends also on uh, what you want to uh, deliver. And of course, um, the best approach is make sure that um, you do the business deployment and that the business is also trained in how to get the increments quickly every now and then and start using them. Then you Thanks, get the uh, David. Lovely, thank you. Yeah, David, I, I, I take a leaf out of Kanban and apply some of the thinking behind Kanban, which uh, a few of them would be, you know, start where you are, um, try and develop incrementally uh, with small changes all the time. I don't believe a big bang works. Um, and, and initially try and respect the roles and responsibilities that are there and all the time reflect to see how can we make this better not on a monthly or a, or a yearly basis, but, but continually to see how we apply it. That, to me, is the easiest way to, to look at Agile. Um, if you're in software development, you might be able to jump straight to Scrum. But, but in a general way, I, I think the, the Kanban principles, no matter which approach you take, are actually pretty good. Lovely. Thanks, David. Um, Charlotte, please, can we have another question? You certainly can, Ali. Um, we have a question that's anonymous. Is it possible to build an approaches such as DevOps into Agile or Waterfall? 
Okay, panel, your view on DevOps. I definitely know we have at least one DevOps trainer on in this panel, uh, your own. Um, so we'll come to you, Nadine, and then Holger. Oh, okay, sorry. To your own first, but Nadine, you go ahead. Yeah. All right. Yes. So uh, DevOps, essentially, you can use Agile. Um, and if you're looking at um, developing incrementally and then implementing into operations, it's it's, um, it's 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 something that you can use in terms of Agile. And um, Waterfall, um, I'm not sure how much of Waterfall you can use, but I do believe that um, Agile is something that you can use as an approach for DevOps. I think it is an Agile approach in any event. Thanks, Nadine. You're out and your thoughts? Yeah, fully agree uh, with that uh, in uh, with respect to DevOps and Agile. And if you uh, uh, want to do that in the waterfall, it will become more a program management approach where you deliver on the project very good working with the operations team, but also get the operations team deploying it. And yeah, that will be uh, the, well, the implementation, getting the outcome, the change uh, management approach, which will be more program management taste for getting it really operational working. Okay, thanks, Jeroen. Holger, your views to finish us off on this one, please? I think it, the answer depends on who you ask. Um, if you have a, ask a DevOps uh, practitioner or an Agile practitioner, you get uh, most likely different responses. Um, my opinion is that, uh, yes, um, you can, um, and it depends how you perceive the interaction between what is currently seen as your change environment as and as your business as usual environment, how that's operating. <laughs> And how much, and I think David mentioned that earlier on, um, your government is tuned and the decision making is given down to the lowest level possible, which you require in, or, in order to su sufficiently effectively do DevOps. Because if you don't have that down to the lowest level from a decision making perspective, you will not be able to do this. So yes, yeah. but uh, governance needs to be ad adequate for it. Thank you, Holger. Um, Charlotte, uh, another question for us, please. You certainly can. We've got a question from Scott. Um, and Scott asks, is it said Agile is for software development or is this just some people putting an Agile framework like Scrum under the Agile umbrella as they don't know any better? Okay, it is said that Agile is for software development. You guys must have an opinion on this one, of your own for sure. I knew we were going to have your hand up. And Holger and David and Jackie. <laughs> okay, so your own Holger, David, Jackie, please. Well, let's say 25 years ago, Agile was indeed only there for software development, but now I see a lot more that uh, practical business organizations are uh, also for the development, well, the improvement of their business processes and grabbing the opportunities to grow in the market, where Amazon is also one of the biggest examples who uh, has done that. That's not just software development. That's really business development where you can be very agile. Thanks, Jeroen. Holger, your thoughts, please. Um, I'd like to make a differentiation. Uh, and I would uh, leave agile for software development and your enterprise should um, aim for agility and uh, adopt yeah. some of the principles and the mindset, but it needs to be interpreted at the right way. Uh, and that would also help at differentiating the frameworks um, as they could do what they do best, focus on agile software de development, uh, but doesn't get in the hair of other frameworks who do other things better. Thanks, Holger. David? Yeah, an interesting question. I suppose Agile is no longer purely um, for software development. It did grow out of software development, but it grew out of software development because software was in an area where 
There was a, a significant change, rapid change. Uh, we didn't always understand what the future was going to look like. Um, we didn't always understand what the technological capabilities were. So that's where Agile came from um, in software development. And as that has happened in bigger business, um, I think Agile software development or Agile is no longer just software development. It's really applicable in any businesses where we see uh, rapid change, where we have new technologies, new types of resources, new ways of deploying our, our resources. Um, I think Agile can work in those situations. Absolutely. Thanks, David. Jackie, your very quick thoughts on this one before we move to our last question, please. Yeah, building on what a lot of the panel have already said, of course, Agile came from uh, software, but I've seen it successfully used in retail uh, projects, marketing, for example. However, just a quick takeaway, one of the things I will say to people when I'm in the classroom is, uh, you know, would you necessarily use it for building a nuclear submarine? Probably not. Um, although it's great for some projects, it's not for everything. Yeah, great answer there, Jackie. Thank you. Okay, Charlotte, can we have our last question for today then, please? You can, uh, Ellie. Our very last question is from a live viewer. And Hamed asks, from a skill set aspects, can project teams deliver both waterfall and agile interchangeably, or is it better to dedicate project teams to a particular methodology? Okay, panel, finish us off with this one then, please, <clears throat> Nadine. And then you have your own hand holder. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it's again, um, it boils down to your organizational culture, your organizational maturity. Um, can you get people to adapt um, to either? Uh, depending on the need or requirement. Um, and then again, on the other hand, um, would you dedicate your project teams to a particular methodology? Um, something like your software development teams, perhaps? Yes, you should. Um, so there's no real um, fixed answer to this um, other than um, what's term organizational maturity. Thank you, Nadine. Uh, Jeroen, your thoughts? I fully agree uh, with Nadine on this, and it's uh, purely the maturity of the organization. But I expect uh, from uh, project managers that they uh, will have the skills to um, coach their project teams uh, as well in the waterfall, as well as in the agile methodology. Thanks, Jeroen. And Holger, your view? Yeah, just echoing again uh, what we already heard. It depends on the maturity of the people on the project teams, if you can call them projects, of course. Um, and the project manager or scrum master, if we have to use a different term for that, uh, should be able to conduct um, that team and help the team to deliver, as we know, between waterfall and agile, whatever it might mean uh, they need to do and reflects uh, the maturity of those individual team members. Lovely. Thanks, Holger. Um, so that's the uh, last question for today's session. Um, I'd like to thank everyone uh, in the audience for the plethora of live questions. It's been fast and furious today, and I know you've kept the APMG team busy in the background with all your comments and questions coming through, so it's wonderful to see. Um, I'm going to go around now and ask our panel for their closing thoughts. So your own. Um, your thoughts first, please. Yeah, I think it's uh, great to have this discussion and work with this panel. And there was uh, just uh, one thing uh, that I should have said when we are talking about uh, Agile for software development only and um, make the advertisement for the Business Agility Works methodology that uh, you now also have uh, APMG. <laughs> Thanks, Jerome. We'll pop a link to that one in the chat as well so people can take a look. Yeah. And Nadine, your thoughts? I think we've um, gone over quite a few um, of the um, questions. And I think one of the most important things um, about this topic is um, understanding your um, organization's maturity levels and understanding what product you're going to be delivering to determine exactly which is your best methodology, but also to understand that you can use the two um, and 
what they term Vagile, um, use Vagile as a methodology. <laughs> so yes, it's. I, I think um, there's a lot more that can be said for this um, on this topic. Yeah, I'm sure there is. I still can't get over this term Vagile. I think it's wonderful. Um, Jackie, your <laughs> thoughts on today, please. Yeah, I think Agile, to an extent, has often been there in projects anyway, and we've got new terminologies and, and words to use and sort of formalizing it, if you like. And one of the things I often will say um, is uh, Agile is a bit like Moscow on steroids. And Moscow has been around for a long time. You no, know, you must have, should have, all of that stuff. So, um, and I subscribe to Euron's um, thoughts, which is, you know, Agile where you can and fall back on waterfall where you have to, totally. Hopefully today's discussion has brought some of that out for people who are listening and watching. Lovely. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks. Olga, your views on today, please. Um, as always, highly exciting, entertaining, and something there to be for to, to be learned. I call myself an agile pragmatist, uh, and I would encourage everybody to be pragmatically looking at methods or approaches and apply what's correct in that situation within that organization. <laughs> Um, Nadine has mentioned it already in her feedback. I think that's the fundamental item there. And I would po point people towards um, agnostic agile and the principles therein that is reflected. Agile is not a dogma. And uh, if you find a dogmatist, run. <laughs> Thanks, Holger. And David, your thoughts on today, please. Holger has stolen the words out of my mouth. Um, I was about to say, you know, don't be dogmatic. I mean, please don't be dogmatic about one approach or the other. If you want to be agile, it's about looking at the possibilities out there, applying them and seeing if they work. And if they don't, go around again. So, so it's about being adaptive to and being open to experimentation. And I think experimentation in your methodology is agile um yep thank you and uh, don't be dogmatic <laughs> thanks very much david charlotte can you come back to us and give us your thoughts on today's show please i want to say a big thank you to all the panelists and those behind the scenes working with the comments the live comments that we've had both on linkedin and youtube the questions have definitely made the panel be very agile and have to have lots of agility to answer their questions. Holger, I hope I've said agile enough for you this time, and I look forward to the next episode and the participation from our very agile audience. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, uh, marvelous, a uh, great job everyone today. Um, really well done, um, what a great show. Uh, so if you've been inspired by our panel and you're getting value from our content, um, leave a comment below and help spread the word by liking and sharing the video. Level Up will be back with another two shows next week. Um, I'll be back with you on Monday at 8 a.m. UK time to look at how to become a professional facilitator. And Nick Holton will be back in his usual host position on Friday at 2 p.m. where the panel will be answering your questions on what to look for in the best cybersecurity training. You can, of course, view all past Level Up sessions on our YouTube channel, so head over there and subscribe to the show. Thanks so much for joining us today. Bye, everyone.